Hey there, welcome back to Transformers War for Cybertron. Well, you've been asking for a modding tutorial, and I'm gonna give you a modding tutorial. This tutorial will tell you everything you need to know about WFC modding. So if you ever wanted to play as a soldier or DLC character, pay attention, because I'm gonna show you just how to do that. Before we get started though, there is a modding package in the description. You're gonna wanna download that and get it extracted. Once you have, we can begin. Now that you've got everything extracted, let me show you where the majority of your modding is going to take place. And that is here, in the Colised file. Now by default, this file is encoded, and cannot be modified in any way. In order to do so, you have to run it through this decoder here. But, I have included a version already decoded. Now the Colised file is a simple text file, so it can be opened with whatever text editor you use, it doesn't really matter and it is a huge wall of text, with the majority of it being stuff you're really not going to care about. And let me just say right now, don't go messing around with stuff that I don't cover directly. You might live to regret it. But let's move on to the most basic form of modding, changing a character. That is actually pretty simple. Let's start off by just searching for Bumblebee. This section right here is what you're looking for. These data providers designate which character is what. We got Bumblebee, Starscream, Megatron, a whole bunch of others. Now, let's say I wanted to take a barricade to defend Iacon. So, what I would do is replace Bumblebee's name with barricades. That's it. Yeah, that's literally it. That will set the game to load barricade in place of Bumblebee. However, Barricade is not cooked in to that specific map, but we'll get to that in a moment. Additionally, we can change his abilities. And this is pretty much the same thing. Bumblebee uses Dodge, right? However, Barricade uses Barrier. So, to make that change, all we gotta do is rename TN Ability Dodge to TN Ability Barrier. And that's it the game will load Barrier in place of Dodge. There is a list of abilities included in the mod package, so if you need some reference, check that. If you want, you can also modify your cooldowns, so that your abilities reload instantly. So just set your cooldown to zero, or if it's an ability like the Sentry, resource required to zero. So, if you want to add a specific weapon to a character, you could do so via Bindings. By default, I have the bindings set to G and Y, typically, but you can change them around if you want. All you really have to do to enable them is take out the semicolon before the weapon you want. I should have pretty much everything included here. I got all the core weapons, all the vehicle weapons, and some bonus ones that I've included in previous videos. Additionally, if you want to drop a weapon you're carrying, just press Shift A, and you will drop whatever weapon you're currently using. This applies to vehicle weapons too. So again, whatever weapon you want to use, just take out the semicolon, and you can change the binding letter if need be. Additionally, there are a few cosmetic options included. You can change the Energon color with the I key. There are three options for each Energon, Decepticon, Autobot, and Neutral. Just take out the semicolon of whatever one you want to use. There's also the color changing commands. Now the way these work is that you Restart checkpoint right after you push the button. The same applies to the Energon. Restart checkpoint after you push a button. This needs to be done at least once per binding, so if you did a primary, secondary, and Energon, you'll need to restart checkpoint three times after each push, so bear that in mind. I will include a list of colors that you can mess around with in a text document, so you can just replace bindings and go with that. And you also have the option of enabling opacity, which will basically make you look like a hologram. Like Starscream or the Hollow Brutes. Well, I think that covers everything we need to mention for the Colised. Let's of course save it. And now that it's saved, we need to encode it. So, we're gonna want to take our Colised and encoder, and move them to Trance Game, Config, and PC. Now once they're there, you're going to want to open your decoder, click encode, 
select the Colised, and then select the Colised above it. Then click Save. And then it will show you the file is successfully encoded. Then, all you gotta do is paste it into the cooked folder. And your Colised changes will have been replaced. But, that's still not enough. The game may now register Barricade as Bumblebee, but he's still not cooked into the map. So we still have one more step to do. So head back to your War for Cybertron folder, and create a new folder called DLC. Go in there, and create another new folder called Modded Map. I don't think the name really matters, but that's just what I've been using. Now go back to where you have your Trans Engine file, and move it into your Modded Map folder. Because this little thing here is the Miracle Worker. If you look at it, it's really just a simple text file. You can see it shows you some map names and all that, but here's the kicker. This little thing can actually make the game load additional packages that it would not load normally. So, if we want to play as Barricade on Defend Iacon, which would be A1 IAC base, we need to get some packages that have Barricade. I recommend the Escalation files, because they have the main playable characters in there. So, let's head to Trance Game, and Cooked PC, and find your Escalation files. We're going to want Broken Hope Base, and of course Remnant, because that has the Decepticons. And if you want, you can also take the INT files, which contain the audio files for the characters. It's not 100% functional, but it will give you the melee attack sounds. Then copy them and paste them in your modded map folder. Now that's good, but there's still one more thing we need. We're gonna need the base file of the map we want to go to. So in this case, we need A1 IAC base. Okay, so now that we have all of our files in place, open Trans Engine again, head down to the A1 IAC line, and you're gonna wanna put the following dot package equals and then the name of the file you want which in this case is going to be this one because we want barricade there's that now let's put in the int file and save and that's it barricade will now be fully loaded into the Defend Iacon chapter. All we gotta do now is head in the game and check him out. And as you can see, Barricade has fully replaced Bumblebee. Now, for some quick additional bindings, you have F1, which will disable the HUD, which I really like having, Alt X, which will enable free cam, so you can get a nice look at characters. And if you want to move the camera, that'll be on the number pad, right below the home end and page up keys. Use the arrow keys there to move the camera around. You'll have to tilt the camera down to go lower, but... That's generally how it works. Additionally, you have Alt-T, which will freeze the game. Although, if you have a mouse, you can still move your character around with that. And then press Alt-R to turn it off. Uh, that's all I can really think of for the most part. Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, if you want to do a soldier, it's pretty much just like this. Although you may need to search for a specific file that has the character you want cooked in. Most of them should be in the escalation file, but there are a few who might not be. But since that covers that, let's now move on to setting up a DLC character. So setting up a DLC character is pretty much the same thing. What you're gonna wanna do is take your UI Party Lobby PS3 and move it to your modded map folder. Now, open your Trance Engine again and, I guess for simplicity's sake, we'll just do it at Iacon again. Put the name of the package in here. And then save it, and you're good. It's just that simple. 
Then, return to your Colased file, and to keep it simple, we'll just change Bumblebee again, and change it to whatever character you want. I'm gonna go with Onslaught. And then save it. Then encode it again. And copy it in. Paste it on. And you are set! Let's head in game and check it and make sure it works. And here is Onslaught. I will say though, I did just stumble across a potential bug. It seems in some cases that if the game freezes or the character doesn't load in, try clearing out your DLC file. It seems like certain packages counteract each other, so since I had Remnant on, it was clashing with the DLC file, so just take that off and that should fix it. With that out of the way, there's just one more thing to cover, and that is art file swapping so we can play multiplayer maps. So let's get to that. Okay, so to make a multiplayer level playable in campaign isn't too terribly difficult. It's somewhat similar to what we've just done, but to get started, let's return to the cooked PC folder. And for this specifically, I recommend using the Dark Energon checkpoint. That chapter doesn't have a whole lot of clutter, so it should result in a cleaner map. Though, feel free to experiment around and see if you can find a better, cleaner map. But, uh, let's go down to D1, which is the first Decepticon chapter, obviously. And I am going to use Dark Energon Art, right there. This is the very last checkpoint in the chapter, just so you know. So that'll take effect where the floor splits apart. That's roughly where this will take effect. So. What you want to do first is add an O to the end of this file. O obviously being for original, because you want to keep the original file safe. If you lose this, you're in trouble. But there's that, and uh, let's uh, let's go to Molten. So for that file, we're gonna to want to go down here, MPCon Molten Art to be precise. So we're gonna to want to copy this and rename it to D1 Orb Dark John Art M. Okay? This will make it so the game loads this map in place of what it normally would. As an additional step, you could transfer the audio file over as well. So same thing, add a O to the end of the file. Then go back down, make a copy of the Molten Audio file. And rename that to D1 Orb Audio M. Okay, so now that you have that, there's one more thing you need to do. Take D1 Orb Base and MPCon Molten Base Copy those, and paste them to your modded map folder. <clears throat> because I believe, but I could be wrong here, I believe you're supposed to have the original base file in your DLC folder. At least I think so. So, let's add a package of... of the molten base file. Yeah, just like that because there are some cases where you miss some textures. You do not need to load in a art or audio file. The swaps will work just fine. However, just as a precaution, I would recommend taking your modified art file and putting it in your modded map folder. You don't need to load them as a package, but it helps to have them in here because I have encountered instances where doing so would make the level a bit more functional. So, bear that in mind. And that should do it. Let's now head into game and see how it looks. Now, nothing may look that different right off the bat, that's okay. Just trust me here. What you're gonna wanna do is look out into the distance 
and press O. And you are here! Yeah, you'll probably notice a few anomalies. You can play around with checkpoints and probably find an area that's a bit cleaner. But for the sake of showcasing, this will do fine. But, as you will see... Here you are! Molten! In all its glory. Overall, the maps are fairly functional, though you may have a few collision issues. I can think of one in particular. On my feet. You can jump out of here, which is actually kind of cool. But yeah, pressing O will teleport you. You kind of have to use that to get to the modified areas because they're usually far away. Where exactly the modified locations will show up will vary with checkpoints, so you may have to mess around a little bit to find them. But you could probably find some replacements that work a little cleaner than this. This was just for showcasing purposes. Feel free to experiment with these, just make sure you have backups of your files. Because if you lose them... I'm so sorry! But I think that will thus then conclude this tutorial. Hopefully you all found this somewhat useful. I am going to go have a nice long vacation. So I will see you later. Later.